morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at the Presbyterian Church of Caddis. Yes? Oh, I have a new stole, and so, and I left the tag on it because it is from the she project in pakistan and i forget what the s stands for but the h is for hope and the e is for empowerment and the she project in pakistan is a is a group that um, collects money to educate girls in pakistan which is a huge deal because oftentimes girls are not educated there and um, the woman who runs this project was telling a story about her pastor and how her pastor brought somebody to her who wanted to have a Muslim to her who wanted to have his daughter educated and they took her into the school and all this kind of stuff and what a, what a blessing her pastor was and um, I lived next door to him in seminary for three years so the world is very small but I do have I'm keeping my tag on here in case any of you want to know why so I'm supposed to say this morning howdy <laughs> and for those of you who are too young to know that reference, I can't help you. <laughs> Please note that we are here at the Presbyterian Church of Caddis, where today we celebrate two very old people and their love for one another. <laughs> Happy anniversary, lovebirds. Thank you, thank you. Jackie and Andy celebrating 50 years. I think the official date was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But that's wonderful, and of course, we're all invited to celebrate with them later this afternoon. Um, remember that on July 2nd, we do have uh, another anniversary, another segment of our anniversary celebration in the evening on July 7th. This one is very interesting. It's the it's the post civil or pre Civil War. Um, discussion about slavery and here in Caddis we had three Presbyterian churches and they took the three stands on slavery that Presbyterians did one was pro, pro uh, one was an abolitionist one was kind of indifferent and one was very pro slavery and we'll hear from them um, and there is an anniversary committee meeting on Tuesday evening at 6 so those of you who are part of that please um, come to that um, next week, we'll have the noisy offering. We are feeding children here in this church at lunchtime, every day, every weekday, all summer long. We started with a handful. We're growing every day. It's very exciting. Um, if you want to help, I'll put a sign-up sheet downstairs for you to sign up, or just call me, or just show up. Um, you could have knocked me over with a feather on Monday when or Tuesday when we were getting ready, and in walked Phyllis Francis. She said, I used to help with homework club, I can do this. <laughs> and she stirred pots and did dishes and everything else, wasn't expecting her. It was a great, great um, heartening experience to see her there. So come and help us with our mission of feeding kids this summer if you can. And do note that Kylie Rose continues to amass her vast scholarships Aren't you proud? I am proud. It's very good. Um, she's 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 got been gotten a scholarship from the Presbytery, from Upper Ohio Valley Presbytery, which is the Russell Scholarship. So we're proud of her for that, and we're proud of our Presbytery for being being able to provide that. I think that's all the announcements for today. So friends, let us come together and worship God. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. And happy Father's Day. The call to worship. Christ summons us to answer God's call to mercy. Christ gathers us and gives us power to be healed and to heal. 
to be forgiven and to forgive, to be freed from sin and to set others free, to tell one another and the world God's, God's presence, presence is at hand. hand. Let us worship God. Hymn number 485. Call to confession. The mystery of God brings the promise of life, but we doubt the Spirit's power to overcome death. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son, reveals that nothing is impossible with God. Let us confess our sins and receive new life. Three of God, Holy Three, Holy One. We confess that we do not know how to look for you. We do not sense your nearness, and if there are angels among us, we are unaware. We do not show the hospitality of the strangers that Abraham showed to you. We do not trust that our hardship can be transformed by your spirit. Our covenant keeper, forgive us, let us laugh with joy because your grace has made peace among us. Send us with the good news so that the others will also receive your blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ gave his life to save us from the wrath of God. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Trust the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
having been reconciled to God in Jesus Christ, I invite you to share the signs of reconciliation and the peace of Christ. In sharing the peace, we express the reconciliation, unity, and love that come only from God. And we open ourselves to the power of God's love to heal our brokenness and make us agents of that love in the world. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us forgive one another. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The Psalter reading this morning is from Psalms 116, 1, 2, and 1219. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my voices to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you a, sac a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Genesis 18, 1 through 5, 2, 1, 21, 1, 7. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat in the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw the three men standing and bowed down to the ground. When he saw them, he ran for the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, O oh Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourself and after that you may pass on. Since you have come to your servants, so, that, so they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice of flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took the curds and the milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then what said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening to the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? 
The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in the due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I, do not, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He, he said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he said, had said, and the Lord did not did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in the old age. At the time of which God had spoken to him, Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever ha have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. <coughs> the New Testament is from Romans 5, 1 through 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. While we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps, perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in, the, in that while we are still were sinners, Christ died for us. Gospel reading is Matthew 9, 35, 10. You're going to do that one? Yeah. Okay. Gospel lesson is from Matthew. And I'm going to start at Matthew 10, verse 5. Um, Jesus has gathered his di disciples together previous to this, told them that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. He has named the twelve, and now he is about to send the twelve out into the world. And at verse 5 says, These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is in it, who, who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. And as you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to it, to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet as you leave that house. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. 
So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. And when they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father, his child, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who enters, who endures to the end will be saved. They will persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes again. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. And I'll invite the children to come forward now. How are we? How are you? Not speaking again today? Okay. Hello, Ms. Grace. Do you have five for me? You're Sarah, right? Mm -hmm. Hello, Wade. So I have some, some visual aids today. You know what this stuff is? Gauze. What do you do with gauze? Put it over a wound or a scratch, uh huh. How about this one? Band-aid. Band-aid, what do you do with that? Put it over an owie? Yeah. How about this stuff? You ever seen this before? Oh. You put it on the band aid, and then what do you do with it? Put it on the owie. Put it on the band aid, put it on the owie, right. Because it makes you feel better, and it, and it kills all the germs that are on there, right? All right, good. Now, if you had an owie, who would take care of it for you? Your mom or your dad? Does grandma or grandpa ever take care of your owie? Yeah? You know, grandma has some really funky stuff she takes care of owies with. <laughs> Might turn your leg purple. Better watch out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, grandma. On your special day, too, I'm teasing you. <laughs> Yeah, your mom and your dad take care of you. Why do they do that? Because they love you. What, what were you going to say? They want to keep you safe. There we go. That's good. Yeah, because if you get an owie and it gets to be really infected or really bad, that's a bad deal. So they want to keep you from, from getting that way. Because they love you and they care about you, right? Well... Today, we're hearing the story about Jesus sending the disciples out. You know, he has these 12 guys that hang out with him. Yeah. You know the day he got him? You're an amazing kid. Do you know the song about them? All right, I'll teach you the song later, okay? Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, so... Don't make fun of her. She's smart. Leave her be. Um, Jesus got his disciples, and he sent them out into the world, right? And he didn't send them with stuff like this, but he told them what they needed to do to be safe. Why would he do that? Because he loved them. That's right. And so I want you to remember that Jesus gives us everything we need to be safe, and to be happy because he loves us. That's right. Very good. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you for our moms and dads and our grandmas and grandpas and for all the things that you give us that keep us safe and help us be happy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, beautiful children. I know, we have a lot more today, huh? <laughs>
Andy and Jackie ought to have a 50th anniversary every day. I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's do that now that we've got a microphone that works. Um, it's a new microphone. It's very sensitive. Can you hear that? Let's move it over here if that helps. 
Okay, so when I was a kid, once a year, my mother and grandmother would dress me up in something very frilly, and I'd have to put on patent leather shoes and tights and put a bow in my hair. And you can tell from the expression on my face how much I enjoyed this. And, and we had to go to the mother-daughter banquet. Did we have mother-daughter banquets here? We, we did some, and the, here the men served and whatever, yeah. Well, there it wasn't like that. It was a very formal occasion. They got out the crystal and the silver and all the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, and I never enjoyed those, but one of the things I remember them doing was saying to the women there, if you look in your purse, what can you find that demonstrates that you're a mother? And somebody pulled out a half-eaten chocolate bunny, right? And somebody pulled out a diaper. If Mary and I were there, we'd pull out dog bones. Am I right? You carry dog bones with you? <laughs> Not in your purse? I have them in my car, though. <laughs> um, so think about, I mean, what's the strangest thing, women, you carry in your purse? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing unusual in your purses? You're all just a bunch of normal? <laughs> Linda, what's the strangest thing you have in your purse? Everything I carry, I need it. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything she has in her purse she needs, but she needs biz to be able to carry it. <laughs> Pretty strange if there's money in yours. Yes? You have a glasses repair kit and you don't wear glasses. But that is proof that you are a mother to somebody who does, yes. I can't get this somewhere where it doesn't make noise. Okay. Anybody else? Interesting things in your purse? You have cinnamon sticks. What medicinal purpose do cinnamon sticks have, Jackie? I like them in my coffee, but they're very good for diabetics, but I'm not a diabetic. <laughs> you put them in your coffee, cinnamon sticks, okay. Um, and since it's Father's Day, men, do you have any unusual things in your wallet? My brother has a picture, a prom picture, even though he and his wife dated in high school, he has a prom picture of a different girl he went to prom with. <laughs> yep, Lachelle Favid was the love of his life. <laughs> if I say that in front of his wife, he says, no, she was. <laughs> Something odd in your wallet, Dale? Nothing? You don't carry a wallet? OK. Well, here's the, here's the gist of all of this, right? Jesus is sending his disciples out <clears throat> into the world. And if we were getting ready to go out into the world on a trip, we would pack a very big suitcase, and we would hope we have somebody like Biz around to carry it for us. But Jesus says to them, no, 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 no. Don't take sandals. Don't even take, don't take another tunic. Don't take any food, don't take money, don't even take the bag with you. Go without it. Well, what a weird thing for Jesus to say to his disciples. I mean, really, you really want him to say, here, here's a bunch of food, take this with you. Here, we've, we've gotten all the money that we've saved together, and you can take this as you go out into the world. But no, that's exactly what he doesn't say. And it's an odd thing for him to say to his disciples because his disciples would not have known, 
what it was like to go into a different place and be a stranger. Now, they were good Jews, and one of the things that good Jews are always told is that you were strangers in a strange land, and so you must be hospitable when a stranger comes to you. That's the story that we hear in Genesis, where where Abraham is visited by three men, and he gets them the best calf, and he gets them the best bowls of milk, and he gets them the best things, and they sit and they converse with one another. And the legend is that he was entertaining angels unawares, right? They're supposed to be hospitable because the Israelites were strangers in a strange land. They lived in the land of Egypt. And when they traveled after the exodus into the promised land, they needed the people there to invite them in and to welcome them and to be kind to them, even though it wasn't their place. And so in the same way, Jesus is saying to his disciples, you will now go and be strangers in a strange land, and it's not your obligation now to be hospitable to them, but you have to rely on somebody else's hospitality. And they would not have had to do that previously in their lives because they would have lived with their own families and with their own family groups and not been strangers to them. And all the more, if this is the case, why didn't Jesus say to them, here, take all the stuff you're going to need and go out into the world? But that's not what he does. He says, take nothing at all. Not one thing. But if I go into your home, or into your town, or into your province, with nothing at all, there are only two things that I have to rely on. One is the generosity of those I meet, and the other is the providence of God. Through doing this, Jesus is demonstrating to his disciples that God will provide no matter where you are and no matter what you do. Later on, he says, don't worry about what you're going to say. How many of you, when you give a speech, sit down and write notes furiously? Right? No, not that's, he says, no, don't do that. Don't plan ahead for what you're going to say. Don't get your best arguments all lined up. Don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit will give you what you need. This is a notion that the early church fathers took very seriously. You know, the notion of fasting. Where we don't eat for a period of time, or we don't drink for a period of time, or we abstain from some, some something else in life that the early church fathers did. They did to demonstrate to themselves the discipline, first of all, of not having that thing, but also the ability to rely on God for what they need. You don't have food? Why don't you have food? Well, at the moment, because you are choosing not to have any. But when you don't have any, it makes you all the more mindful that it is God who provides it for you. This is a good text. God provides. It's a good one for us because we say, yes, we want to be a church that grows. We want to invite people in. We want to, but we don't know where those people are. We don't see them. Nobody we know want to come to this church. Heck, we don't even want to come to this church some days. (laughs) Stop saying that, Linda. (laughs) God will provide. 
God will provide. But when God provides, we've got to be ready to respond, right? Did you see this on the front? Keith came up with this. He said, I hope this is all right. I couldn't find a good picture. I said, you are perfect. Because what are we to do once God provides? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Feed the hungry once a month in a community dinner. Feed hungry kids every day at lunchtime. Open the doors to the Salvation Army so that they might help those in need. Invite your friends and neighbors to come and hear the gospel message here in this place. You received without paying. So give without pay. For God will provide all that you need. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing together now our insert hymn. Insert hymn is um, a John Bell hymn. It comes from the Iona community in Scotland. It's a wonderful um, little Scottish tune. And I think you'll catch on to it pretty simply. be seated.
As we pray together today, let us remember fathers and father figures on their special day. Let us also <clears throat> pray our prayers, prayers of celebration for Andy and Jackie as they celebrate today. Are there other joys or concerns we have? Continue prayers for Ann Reed's family. Others? Denny Elias. Denny Elias. Healing. Prayers for healing for Denny Elias. Teresa Tanner has... Um, Stage four pancreatic cancer. So prayers for healing for her. Prayers for Kevin Jones. Do we have an update on Kevin? I haven't heard anything this week. I've been around this week. Okay. Janet Walters, prayers for comfort. Yes, Diane. Diane Page, is that what you said? Peyton. Anything else? Prayer of Thanksgiving for Christy here and all these wonderful children and grandchildren. Prayer of Thanksgiving for children and grandchildren in 50 years, and we wish you 50 more. Dear ones, let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the beauty that you have surrounded us with, and we thank you for your many provisions, for shelter and nourishment, for friends and family, for love and compassion. We thank you this day for families who surround us with goodness and for fathers and father figures who have shown us your love. And we pray this day for those for whom the word family or home is not a pleasant one. We ask your blessing on the downcast and the abused. We pray this day for children of the world, O oh Lord, that they might be educated and medicated and live into their fullness, the fullness of the glory that you have offered them. We especially ask your blessing on the children of Pakistan and the girl children as they're educated. We pray this day for the many who are in need of your healing touch, O oh Lord, and we ask your blessing on Denny and Teresa and Kevin and Janet and Diane. We pray for those who grieve and for those who mourn. Pray that you be with the Reed family. We ask, O oh Lord, that we would cast all our cares on you, that we would rely on your provision, and that we might be truly grateful for all that you have given us including your son, Jesus, our Christ, in whose name we pray as he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus gave, gathered the disciples and gave them authority to heal the sick, cast out evil, and proclaim good news. Let us present our offerings for the mission of the church, bearing witness to the kingdom of God. The morning offering will be received. Blessed Trinity, three-part harmony in you, who, those who sing for joy revel in your glory, and those who cry in pain find comfort in their sorrow. Thank you for being God with us. Thank you for keeping your promises to our faith ancestors and to us. Thank you for coming near to us in your Son, Jesus our Christ. Thank you for the hope that brings life through the inpouring of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the love you hold up before the world on the cross of Christ our Savior. Even our offerings come from the fruits of your blessing. Praise to you, O holy God. Thanks to you, O holy three. Glory to your name, O God most high. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 411. Arise, your light has come.
dear ones, as you go from here, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.